This is Excel 2016, Module 9, Part 1. In Module 9, we're going to be looking at a lot of the counting and finance functions that are available within Excel. The first set of functions that we are going to be looking at are all related to loan analysis. We can calculate the payment, the future value, the number of payment periods, the present value, as well as the interest rate. And all of these functions require us to convert, first of all, the annual interest rate. We must convert that into a rate per period. So for example, if we are making monthly payments, then we need to take that annual interest rate and divide by 12. If we are making quarterly payments, we would divide by 4. If we were making one annual payment, of course no division would be necessary because we would be dividing by 1. Now, the payment periods also must be converted. We are usually talking years when we negotiate loan terms, but we must talk about the payments. The total number of payment periods or the total number of payments being made on the loan in order to work with these functions. So you're going to take the total number of years and multiply that by the total number of payments per year. So let's get into our workbook for this module. And this workbook is called the QR workbook. So I have added a couple things. I've added a row here for rate. The book does discuss the rate option later on, but we're going to show it here as well. Then I also wanted to let you know that these row headings show us what is being calculated in the green boxes. So we are going to start out by entering a 5%. That is our annual interest rate that we're working with. And we're trying to initially borrow 450 thousand. The present value is always going to be how much you borrow. So in all of our other formulas it's going to stay the same except for the one where we're going to be calculating it. So I'm going to go ahead and put in some formulas to reference that field in the other rows. The future value on a loan calculation is always going to be zero. What the future value means is at the end of the loan period, how much do I, at the end of the total life of the loan, how much do I owe? So if it is a 10-year loan, after I've made 10 years worth of payments, how much is still owed? Owed, and that should be zero. So in every other equation, except for the one where we will be calculating that value, we're gonna go ahead and set our future value to zero. Now we start out assuming that we have a five-year loan and then we also assume we are making quarterly payments so we're going to be making four payments a year. In this particular row we don't want to put in that it's five years 
because we will be calculating the number of years. But in the other rows, we can carry this five years down and assume that we're trying to pay these off in five years. We're going to assume with every loan analysis that we're working with that we are in fact making quarterly payments. The annual interest rate is given to us. So it's in B4, but instead of having to reference it up, I'm going to absolute, whoops, absolute, I'm going to hit the wrong key again. Sorry about that. Absolute reference so that I can then copy it and include it in these other rows. Now I can't include it in this row because I will be calculating the rate per period. So we're going to have to calculate that. All right, so now let's take a look at the function or the formula here that we need for the number of periods. All right? I want to say if I am making a 5-year loan, so I take 5 years and I multiply that by the number of payments. So I'm going to copy that formula and then I can copy it down here to these other two formulas as well. Now the rate Again, that's going to be the same except for the bottom one. So I'm going to take my annual interest rate and divide that by the number of payments per year. And then I can copy that down to my other formula. So let's go ahead and calculate in this first row what the quarterly payment amount would be. So to do this, I'm going to go to the finance, or excuse me, the formulas tab and go to financial. I'm going to scroll down and locate PMT. We're going to keep consistently across the row for each of these examples. So I'm working in row 7. I'm going to locate the rate per quarter. Then I'm going to locate the number of payments. And then I'm going to locate the present value. The future value is 0. I could type that there or I could leave it blank. For Sam, I would recommend leaving it blank. The type has to do with the timing of the payments, whether they are at the beginning of the period or the end of the period. For this class, you should leave this blank unless specifically stated otherwise. So now you can see that we would have a payment of about between twenty-five and twenty-six thousand. Now let's say that the business owners thought, you know, we don't think we can pay that much. So what what would happen if we paid twenty thousand? How much would be left? Would we still owe? So we're going to change this to negative 20,000. And payment amounts are going to be shown as negative because they are an outlay of cash. So it always puts them negative. We're going to come over to the future value box and we're going to calculate that. 
So you're going to go to the financial button again and you're going to choose FV, future value. So now I am assuming, I'm in row 8, that the rate is there, 1.25%. I am still making 20 payments. This time, however, I'm changing the payment amount to the 20,000. And then I still know my amount that I borrowed. Oops, I went down to the other row. So we're going to fix that. Type is left blank. And now you can see at the end of five years, I would still owe over $125,000. So that's pretty substantial. The next question they might ask is, how long would it take me to pay off this loan if I was paying $20,000? So we're going to keep the payment the same. And now we're going to put in a formula to calculate the number of payments. So under financial, you go to NPER. This time we are in row 9, so we're going to have a 1.25%. The payment is our 20000 We borrowed 450. Now this time we're actually paying it off, so the future value is zero, so we can leave that blank, and the type we can leave blank. And you can see that it would take us 26, almost 27 payments. So in order to calculate the number of years, I would take the number of payments, divide by the number of payments per year. And it would take me between six and seven years, almost seven years, to pay it off. All right, so let's say they said, we really don't want to have the loan for that long. So we're going to up the payment a little bit. We're going to try to come up with 23000 as a payment amount. So we're going to enter a new payment amount. And now they want to know how much could they borrow and have it paid off in the five years at those terms. So we're going to start out in B10. We're going to go to financial, and this time we're going to pick PV for the present value. We're entering the cells in row 10. And we're going to say, okay, we have 1.25 as our interest rate. The number of periods is going to be 20. We're going to be paying 23000 we want to pay the loan off, so it will be zero. So we'll leave that blank. And then we will leave type blank as well. And so you can see you could borrow just a little bit over 400000 The last question they might want to try to figure out is if I paid 23000 How much would the interest rate have to be for me to pay off a $450,000 loan? So you might want to see, is that interest rate close? And then maybe I could go to another bank or try to negotiate. But if it's way off, then you obviously, that's just not an option. So that's how we could use the rate function. So let's go ahead and calculate our rate per quarter that we would need. So we're going to go to financial. 
we're going to go down to rate. So I have 20 payment periods. A payment amount of that, 23000 and a loan amount of 450 And I want to see how much would the interest rate be if I paid off the loan. So it's zero or blank. And type is blank. So in order to get to the annual interest rate, I would take this quarterly one and multiply it by the number of payments in a year. And you can see by that interest rate that it is, there's no way that would be happening. And so trying to search for another loan resource is probably not going to do it either. You just simply would have to decrease your loan. Now the book does not show the rate function here, but I think it is helpful to see that one there as well so that you could analyze, you know, is it worth shopping around? Am I close to that interest rate? I mean, if it came in at 4.75, maybe it's worth looking around to see if we could get a different lender with better terms. So that concludes our loan analysis section. Again, we've covered the payment function, the future value function, the number of periods, the present value, and the rate. going to go ahead and save our work. And when you come back, if you view the next segment, we will be looking at a loan amortization schedule.